Okay, so we'll talk about snaring beaver today and, and trapping otters. When it comes to snaring, there's two big mistakes that everybody makes when they start out. The first thing is, the biggest mistake, everybody wants to hang that lock in the 12 o'clock position, and that's absolutely the wrong thing to do because any little thing that comes along bumps, even a good strong wave or a big wind will knock it shut. So when you're snaring, you want to get that lock off here at the 10 o'clock or the 2 o'clock position. All right, and then that's just like putting pan tension on a foothold trap. Once it gets to a certain spot, it fires and fires all at once, okay? The other thing is, is getting that thing supported solid. That is the biggest thing with snare. And the way I do that, I take a piece of number nine or a piece of number 11 gauge wire, I take my pliers, and I'll put a bend in it right here, and then I'll put a bend in it right here. Now y'all aren't allowed to snare on dry ground. Is that, that's right, right? Okay. But what you can do with this then is stick this out into the water. If I was to come out here and just poke the end of that number nine in, it flops around. But by doing this with this little bend in it like this, when I put this in the ground, Everything goes in and now it's now it's solid. It can't spin and can't turn on you. So push that down. Now that wire's solid. Or if I was to take it and just poke the end of it in, it flops around on you. And that's absolutely one of the <laughs> biggest mistakes guys make when they first start snaring. So we'll get into some sets, just some basic sets here right quick for beaver. Um, you, a caster mound is probably the most versatile set you can make for beaver. And you can make it where that snare's out in the water just the same as you can up on dry ground. We're gonna, we're gonna make believe this, this line right here is our bank, okay? This is our, the water's out here and this is our bank back here. What you wanna do is take a tile spade and cut you a horseshoe trough out here, back here. Big enough, you know, make it so wide so you can get a beaver up in it and get that water moving into it. And then you would hang that snare out here at the mouth. I get that, bring it us. Boy, even the ground's hard in this box. There we go. You would hang that snare right out there at the edge of the water. So that you've got half of that loop submerged. The biggest thing with snaring with caster mounds is to get it back far enough. We're gonna we're gonna let this represent our caster mound. A caster mound, in case you don't know what it is, is a pile of mud and leaves thrown up on the bank by the beaver, and he crawls up there and puts his caster smell on it, his own smell. To make that's his territory now. It's no different than a dog peeing on a wheel on a car or, or a truck. That's his, and he's stay. He's gonna he's gonna defend that with everything he has. Well, when you're snaring, you've got to get this back far enough that that beaver can pass through the snare to get to your caster mount. Okay, so give him give him 18 to 20 inches to pass through there to get up to your mount to get up to your scent. Like I said, the loop will be half under, up just a whisker. You don't want it sitting right down on the bottom, but you don't want it up too high either, so you've got half of that loop submerged. I want somewhere between half and two thirds of that loop underwater, because when a beaver's swimming, if you watch him, the only thing sticking out of the water is his eyes, his ears, and his nose. So you've got more beaver underwater than what you've got on top. So you want more loop underwater than what you've got on top. Does that make sense to everybody? That's basic caster mount. Cut that horseshoe back, slick it up good, make it look like a beaver's been coming up in there using it. Put your good caster lure up here. That set would be complete. I stake everything off. I You can use timber. Come here. I set, stake. I use the pogos. You can use whatever steak choose you know fits you you can use a rebar steak you can use whatever 
Um, I just like the pogos. And then I really like these big split rings to attach my stake to. As I make a catch, once you make a catch, that loop on that snare is shot. It's done. Okay, they're a one, they're a one and done kind of a deal. So when I come up here the next morning, I dispatch my beaver. Then when I'm ready to change that, all I have to do is slide my pliers in there a little bit, put that cable in, get them in there, push down on that cable a little bit, take it off of the disposable, and then put a new one back on. I don't have to pull that stake every time. That's all I have to do, and then I can just rebuild this right back where it was, and I'm back in business again. And my snares, are all built identical, just different lengths. This actually, I thought I was grabbing one of my beaver snares and this is actually one of my coon snares, but it, for this demonstration, it'll work. This is, for a beaver loop, a, an eight to a nine inch loop, it takes approximately three foot of 564 one by 19 cable. I really like the one by 19. I use seven by seven for years and it works just fine. I like the one by 19 because it takes a little more abuse. It's a little stiffer cable than the seven by seven. And it also loads a lot easier. And when I say, what I mean by load, you load the loop. And what you do is you take about that much of it, about six or eight inches on a three quarter inch piece of pipe works great. Or I've done a million of them off the ball of my pickup when I had to, you know build them up and be in a hurry, didn't get a chance to load them, so I'm loading them on the line as I'm going. But you take that and you run that across that cape of that pipe like that, and then I flip the cable over and I do it again. What that does is it makes that loop hang in a more perfect circle instead of a teardrop. Okay, and you can do this with seven by seven or the, or the one by 19, either one. Seven by seven takes a little more force, one by 19, you gotta be a little more careful with it and not load it too heavy because you'll end up kinking that cable because it's a little stiffer than the seven by seven. So about three foot of one by 19, 564. I run a cam lock on it. Now I run in some states like Arkansas and, and uh, Missouri is the same way where you've gotta be a one piece lock, a relaxing style lock. I don't necessarily like those if I can, you know, if I, if I have to run them, I just have to. The reason I don't like running them on this one by 19 is you don't get the positive lockup on the cable like you do with a cam. The single one piece lock is faster on the one by 19 than the cam is, but I will suffer the speed for the positive lockup every time, okay? And what I mean by that, when you, with that relaxing style lock, like the one, but uh, okay, so the the bullets, the the minis, the 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 micros, those things won't lock up on this cable. A positive lockup. When you go to skin and process that fur, a lot of times there will be two or three marks from the snare on that fur, where the snare has has cinched down. And then it let go just a little bit and it moved and then it let go a little bit and it moved again and that's where it finally come in stopped on the animal. Not that it makes a whole lot of difference with the market the way it is because they're all hatters anyway. I just personally don't like seeing that. So I'll suffer the speed for a positive lockup every time. Now this lock, like I said, is a little bit slow on this kind of cable. If you're looking for a fast lock and a fast cable together that's positive lockup, then use the 7x7 seven seven with a cam. And then you've got speed plus a positive lockup all together. This end of my loop on Beaver is 7 feet long generally. Now like I said, I screwed up and grabbed this coon snare, but this I usually use 7 feet of 330 seconds 7x7. I like a 10 foot snare on Beaver because it allows that beaver to get out of the way of other beaver, all right? Back when I was silly and was younger and was using five foot snares, you, we could use them on dry ground and you would uh, catch beaver in a slide 
And if he happened to get hung up in the middle of that slide and couldn't get out of the way, though, if you're in a high beaver population, those other beaver trying to get up and down that slide would just chew that beaver to ribbons. Okay, just they weren't mad, they were just trying to get him to move so they could get up and down it too because he was going somewhere also. So run a 10 foot snare, move that beaver off out of the way and let him do his thing over here. Plus it also saves your set just a little bit. Kind of saves the integrity of it. You can come back, dispatch your beaver, put in a new snare, come back and pop it right back in where it was. You're back in business again. Anybody got any questions there? Okay. So another set that I use, and we're gonna kind of have to use our, our imagination just a little bit. We're gonna imagine this is a tree out in the water, okay? This is probably my favorite way of snaring beaver. Any place you can con a bear beaver in a, in a, in a, in a uh, trail in the water, I can snare that beaver just as easy. As long as there's something there for me to attach this number nine wire to. And if there's not anything there, a lot of times it doesn't hurt anything to put something there. Just take a log, a stick, you know, so big around, something that's a little bit solid, drive it in out there beside that channel where the beaver's swimming, stake your beaver off somewhere else, and I take two fencing staples, inch and a half long fencing staples, I put that wire up against the tree and I drive one here and I drive one here. That way my snare's solid, okay, my support. And then you just hang your snare. You can hang it out over the channel if you want to. What I like to do is go ahead and put in a lure set right on the side of that tree. If I can, put that loop to where it is just touching that tree. And then I'll put a little lure here, and I'll put a little lure over there. Deadly. That, Absolutely deadly. Loop half underwater? Half again? underwater, yep. And you can put this set in anywhere that allows you to do it. You're not, you're not at the, the mercy of the beaver. The beaver is going to come to you now. You can catch him anywhere you want to. Put that out there, put that loop about half under, put a little lure on each side of that snare. He will pass through there trying to find that lure. Deadly set, guys. I'm not kidding you. If you can put, if you got places you can put them in, I highly recommend you do. You will catch the heck out of beaver. Um, the biggest thing is a lot of guys, and another thing, in my opinion, a lot of people mess up on, you know, the difference between fall trapping beaver and spring trapping. Fall beaver, you've got to go to them. Trap a beaver in the spring, they'll come to you, okay? Because they're trapped and they're moving. In the fall, they've got their colonies established. They're not going anywhere the rest of the winter. They're going to stay right there. So you've got to go to them. You go in there with a different smell of, of lure, and I'm telling you, you go right into their living room, and you're going to upset them terribly, okay? Put enough, generally speaking, to a colony of beaver, there's somewhere between six and nine beaver in that colony. So set enough traps that you catch six or nine beaver that first trip through. Take them out of there in a hurry and just be gone. Because the longer you fool around in there, the more you're setting them up, okay? They're gonna start getting waspy on you. And when you got waspy beaver, I personally would rather work on trap shy coyotes any day of the week. You get a beaver that's set up and he knows the game and he knows what's going on, he'll make you stay up all night with heartburn. I ain't kidding you. He'll make you pull your hair out. But that's a whole other demo there, so we won't get too far into that. But set enough traps that you take the colony. If, you're wanting, if you have to get them out of there, say they're doing crop damage or they're doing damage to a road, Put enough sets in there that you take care of the colony all in one shot and just be done. Plus with the, you know, the way our, dare I say, Bidenomics, you know, the way our gas prices are and stuff, it makes no economical sense, even with the price of beaver where they are, to run out there four or five, six times with two or three sets in to take those beaver when you could do it in one or two trips and be done. You know, it's just saving you gas money in the long run. Uh, that's kind of it on the beaver thing. You know, it's real simple. It's not hard. Don't make it any harder than it has to be.
beaver trappings work enough, don't make work out. Um, we'll kind of move on to the otters here. Uh, I absolutely love catching off. And you guys are gonna laugh at me. This little number 11 is my favorite otter trap to use. This little thing, when it locks up on a foot, it is not coming out. If you could get this thing staked right, and he could get a toe or two in there, you could hold a grizzly bear with this thing. And it's all because of the way the trap is designed. Now I know a lot of guys run number one, or number one and a half coil springs, number two coil springs on otters. And that's fine, there's been a pile of them caught in those traps. I'm not saying there hasn't, but if you'll take that coil spring trap, and I don't care if it's four coils, you can do the same thing. If you take that trap, and put a, a flat screwdriver between the jaws and twist, you'll back them springs right now. You'll twist that screwdriver because you're, you're backing those springs down. You try this with that, you try that with this little number 11, you will twist the handle off that screwdriver before you ever back those springs down because they work straight up and down instead of side to side. That's the difference. That little trap right there, I've held everything in them. I've held coyotes, I've held otters, I've held beaver, uh, bobcats, I've held everything in these little number 11. They are a whale of a trap. So the biggest thing with otters, in 2003, I had the privilege to work for the state of Missouri on their otter research project. We caught them all in number 11s, we took them out of the traps alive, we took them to the vet, they did a little surgery on them, they put a radio transmitter up inside the body cavity. Then I had to take them back, observe them through the night, make sure they were gonna be okay. Then the next day we released them at the catch site where we caught them the day before. They were doing telemetry studies, they were, they were tracking their movements and their passes. I had one young male otter in three weeks time had moved 100 miles from where I had originally caught him. I can pick the place. The otter picks the time, and you ain't gonna hurry him, okay? So you've gotta keep, the biggest, the biggest battle with otters is keeping a set working long enough until he comes back through. And that's a hard deal because we've got weather working against us all the time. You know, freeze up, floods, drops in the water level, everything, we've got all that. So we have to try to do everything we can to keep the sets working until the otters come back through. Um, one of my favorite sets to use, believe it or not, when I find those otter toilets, and you cannot mistake an otter toilet, if you ever find one, you'll know what it is right off, because they'll be full of fish scales, crawfish shells, duck feathers, everything like that. That was another thing that was kind of amazing that I learned on that, uh, on that project that I worked on. So we started late August, in through September, through October, and into the very first part of November. When I first showed up on the job, the otter toilets were full of fish scales and crawfish shells. That's what they'd been living on all summer long. The day, and I'm not kidding you, the exact day the cooch showed up, them, them droppings and then the puke went to being full of feathers, coot feathers. Okay, they come up underneath those coots and they hit them things like a torpedo and they just explode, all right? So yeah, they're very hard on waterfowl. They're not, you know, don't everybody thinks, oh, it's a cute cuddly otter, he's not hurting anything. The hell he ain't, okay? He is killing waterfowl just the same as everything else does. So one of my favorite sets to use is find that toilet and I put in a flat set just like I would if I was going to catch coyote. No different. Bury the trap in there. Try to stay back. Oh, six, eight inches, pan center. I want it set. I'm not going to be able to do it here because I didn't bring my spade in. I screwed up and forgot that. I want my otters coming between the jaws of the trap, never over the jaws. So I turn the trap just like that at a flat set. Okay, so the otter comes in between the jaws, create, create a walkthrough for him at the toilet. All right, we've got an attraction here. We're about six inches, about six inches pan center. We've got a walkthrough. Now, here comes the fun part, stay. The fun part is what you lure them with. 
And that's Bobcat Glam Wheel. There is something about Bobcat Glands an otter will not leave alone. Don't ask me what it is, I have no idea. But an otter will not leave Bobcat Glam Wheel alone. If you want to catch otters, put in these flat sets just like that. And now the set would, the trap would be buried, of course, just like, just like you would for a coyote. Uh, that's all you do. You just lure it up with a good bobcat gland lure there. And if there's an otter around, now granted, you're gonna catch a coyote now and then. You're gonna catch a bobcat once in a while and a coon ain't gonna leave you alone. We all know that. You live in Illinois, you've got coons, same as I've got in Iowa. So you're gonna catch those two. But you will catch, otter, catch otters at this set as well. Okay? It's deadly on them. Um, another set that I use, Quite a bit. And what's, you, what's y'all's exposed bait law here? Is it, it's got to be none? You don't have one? No, okay. you can't, you can't, have, any can't have any exposed. Okay, how does it read? Is it exposed to soaring birds or is it just not exposed at all? None. Okay, perfect. Perfect. The other set that I use a lot is with a portable pocket. Now you want this a little bit longer. I personally, I would make this about 36 inches long. Okay, and all this is a piece of exhaust tube welded on top of it. If I were to remake these, I would drill clear through the exhaust pipe and run my run my rebar on up through and then weld it on. So if I need to drive on it, I can with a hammer. I can beat on it, and I'm not screwing up my pipe. But what you do. Again, it's going to be a little tough in this box, but we'll make it. Get rid of this, get rid of this, cover that back in. Okay, so we're, now that's our bank, okay? We're out in the water. I run two traps up this, up this stake. Now, what you need to do is run a safety on these things. You need to run a piece of wire around here and kind of wire this, wire it around up here at the top. Because what happens every once in a while, you'll hook a coyote in these things, even out in the water, and he'll pull it, he'll pull that stake and take off with it. Well, if you've got your traps secured to it, now you've got a drag, okay? So he's not gonna go very far. Uh, but every now and then, you will hook a coyote in this. So I'm just, I'm warning you about that ahead of time. Come out into the water off the bank, and you can leave this as high as you want, or you can put it down as low as you want. It doesn't make any difference. Cram that thing full of uh, gizzard shad, uh, ground carp, whatever you've got for a fish that, to make it work, okay? Put a little shot of a lure up here, something like you can use a bobcat land lure, you can use uh, a good coon lure, anything like that up there. I want my traps set between the fish and the bank. Just like that right there. He sees the pipe, he smells the lure, he smells the fish, he comes around off the bank, hits him to number 11 and you've got him. And do not be surprised when you come up there and you've got two coon tied up here on the same stake or you've got a pair of otter tied up on the same stake. A mink and a coon, uh, muskrats and a beaver, or I mean, you just you never know what you're going to catch with this thing, guys. I need the water. I want just enough water to cover my traps so that I don't miss the mink and the rats. This is what I do for a living. Okay, this is not a, this ain't no hobby to me. I trap, I have a lure business, and I dig medicinal roots, and that's all I do all year long. This is it. So. I can't afford to miss anything, okay? So I want just enough water to cover those traps and that's it. Make sure they're seated down in there pretty solid. Traps are between the bank and the fish. You can't get any more simple than that right there. And it will catch everything. The only two animals I have not caught using this set is a badger and a weasel. Other than that, I'm taking everything else with it. You catch everything. Anybody got any questions there? Guys, I'm telling you, this is going to be a fast little demo because I don't waste a lot of time. Everything I do is built for, is streamlined. Okay, everything is for speed.
The more sets I get out in a day, the more area I cover, the more traps I run, the more fur I catch. It's just that simple. Anybody got any questions there? Okay, so the next thing in is a crossover. Set the crossover coming out of one body of water going to another. And you'll pick those otters up coming out of a dry creek, coming up to a pond, I mean, coming out of a canal, going over to a lake, it doesn't matter. Okay, otters show up in the darkest places sometimes. The biggest thing is though, when you're setting those crossovers, if this, if this is representing our crossover, okay, come clear back here. All right, I want to trap down here at the bottom of the crossover, offset just slightly, just like that right there. Then I want another one up here in the middle of it, dry. And I want another one, if I can get it, set just like that, dry. And then I want another one, if I can get it down to the bottom of the slide. Otters travel in, in groups, okay, a lot of times. There might be four or five otters together at once. Set enough traps to take those otters, okay? Not only that, but otter are very circle shy. They're very shy of a catch circle. If I happen to catch a coon down here in this bottom one the first morning and I don't catch anything else up here on top, dispatch that coon. I don't drown anything, okay, intentionally. Everything's just pinned to the bank, the stake right there. Everything's tied up right there. So I dispatch that coon. Let's say the next night the otter comes through. He will avoid that catch circle like it's the play. He'll go right around the outside edge of it and jump right back on that trail just as fast as he possibly can. Well, if all I've got is that one set down there and one down here at the bottom end of it, I just beat myself, okay? Because he's going around and catch something. So put in these sets dry right up on top of, the, of the, wherever he is, wherever he's crossing. I want them set just like that in the trail I just take a little light, I mean a light handful of grass, and go over that trap real lightly. Because you're not working with very much jaw spread there. So if you put too much grass over, it's going to plug it open. And an otter's paw is slick. It's rubbery. It's wet. It's a lot like our hands. It's real slick and, and rubbery. So he'll pop right out. But if you just throw a little light bit of grass over that, cover it up, that's all it takes. That's all you have to do to it. And then you just go down the trail, and you find, what I look for, I look for the narrow spot in the trail, okay? And if there, is, if there is no narrow spot, make one. That otter don't know, he don't care, okay? He gets on that trail, he's like a train on tracks, and he just keeps going right down. So if there's not a narrow spot in the trail, make one. Just put a couple of clods of dirt, clump of grass, a log laying parallel with the trail, whatever you gotta do, to narrow that up to keep him on that trail. That's all you have to do. No bait, no lure, no nothing. Just blind set him just like that right there. And you'll take everything that comes up and down that trail. Don't be surprised when you've got an otter tied up down here, but you got a 60 pound beaver up here, okay? And don't think that little number 11 won't hold him because it darn sure will. He'll be right there. Anybody else got any questions on that? Yeah, Mark. Would you ever use a 220 on an eight stand in there? You can, you right. can, doesn't hurt anything. Would um, it shy away from them? On so, the ground so ball they will after you make a catch. And you don't have to move it very far if you just go a foot or two up or down the trail one way or the other and put it right back in. His mind is focused on that location, not the one ahead or behind, okay? He doesn't, under, he doesn't know that that trap's there. He just knows it was here yesterday or the day before or whenever. You know, he's coming down there through there and, and Ricky Raccoon, he sees him laying there dead in the 220. He's like, well, Ricky got killed right there. But he didn't get killed up here. So just move it up or down the trail one way or the other is all you have to do. When you catch coon in these up on, up in these, up in these crossovers, move the trap, okay? Move the trap up or down the trail, wherever you have to, to the next narrow down location. That's where you, because again, as I said, he's going to avoid that catch circle. He will avoid it. He'll go right around it, but he's coming right back. So when he comes back on that trail, you've got to have a set waiting there for him. 
was sent. Father, the potter, if a coon was caught in that purse and you moved that trap back? Not a bit. Okay. That bottom of a bit. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to take the time and put the work into it, if you have the, if you have the luxury to have the time, put these things on a slide wire. You know, you can drown that otter out there just as easy or drown that coon or whatever, and it doesn't hurt a thing. I just don't have that kind of time because I have to get as many sets out in a day as I can. And same way up here on dry ground. If you're up in the middle of this crossover, run a slide wire cable out over that way and slide that coon over there. Now you've saved this location. Okay, he's over there tearing that up. That otter ain't gonna pay a bit of attention to that over there. He's still on this crossing. So the next day you come in here, you dispatch your coon and you slide that trap back over and put it right back in where it was. That doesn't hurt a thing. It, you can darn sure do it easy enough. Like I said, I just don't ever take the time to do it. If I was smart and would just slow down just a little bit, I would do the same thing. Right. That I would just, save you time in the long run because you could make the right. Catches. Right. Instead of having to pull the stake and move it, you can just put it right back in. Anybody got any questions at all? Guys, I know like